Okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, so we're starting at the front door, and this is uh, the main living room area, okay. and then we've got a kitchen kitchen over here. Mm -hmm. Look at there, granite countertops, man. Wow. <laughs> and then we got then we got one bedroom over here. Show the bed in there. And this is show the yeah, bed. Uh, the yeah, bed yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like that. Uh huh. Kind of, kind of basic. Then cl two closets over there, and then um, this is the facilities. You know, we have a, a restroom and a shower over there. Hmm. And let's see. And this is bedroom number two. This one right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then this is uh, this is a room where I brew my uh, beer. Hmm. I got I got a got a thing of beer and a this right here is beer and this is uh, mead. I oh, got mead. brewing right now. Yeah, yeah, mead. honey wine. Yeah, yeah. So so this this over here is my uh, this is a reverse osmosis uh, uh, filter. I've got it's a commercial one. I got, I got it's a, a one from a previous Starbucks install. Yeah. And and so uh, anyway, it's got a big old pressure tank on it. Uh, yeah, so so this is the uh, that that room, the second bedroom I told you about. I got a little uh, table here where I do electronics. Yeah. And then I got another another room over here. This is a this is another smaller room. I was just cleaning this out today, getting this one ready. This is empty right now, but we can put a cot or a bed in here, something like that. Is there an entry to it outside up through that other room? Uh, yeah, it's got, got an external door to the outside. Oh, and, uh, so now this is, uh, another room. This is, uh, the main one here. This is the kind of like a living room, if you will. Got a fireplace over there and an external door. Yeah. So, so that, that's pretty much the house. Yeah. Uh, so four rooms. Yeah. And then, well, I have an upstairs also, but, but it's kind of basic. It, it's just a, uh, you know, it's just just a simple room up there. But um, if need be, we could uh, put somebody up there. Can and there's show also, it? show me. Uh, yeah. Well, all right. <laughs> no, Let's see. For what's up there. See if I if I'm up there as a client. I haven't been up there in a while, so it's going to be kind of rough. And storage. Because uh, what you do is. I don't know if you can see it. I'm 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 outside right yeah. now. I went outside the door, and so we're gonna go. We're gonna go up the stairs over here. Yeah. I haven't been up here in a while. Oh crap! Well, all right. Well, I gotta go get the key. <laughs> nice. Yeah. This this is an uh, external uh, room out here. And uh, yeah, so it does have to have a. I, I, I keep it locked. Yeah. So how are you doing up there in Frosty, Missouri? I'm doing great. Uh, what I'm What's doing the temperature is I'm, up there? Like? Weather is freezing right now. Okay. But are you gonna try retry that room or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm getting the key so, right now. So I met with the guys. We went over the curriculum. They feel pretty confident about delivering what we want to deliver, and I'm going to write that up in detail. I think we came up with actually a very interesting program, and uh, I'll share that with uh -huh. everybody. And I think uh, you don't have to worry about it because you don't have to deliver it. I'm, I'm confident. Like, for example, uh, for the Arduino, there's the route of, yeah. of people where our guys were excited about the idea of CNC drill which we can do off our CNC axis. So we're going to CNC drill the whole pattern for an Arduino and then on a copper clad board. And then we're going to draw the connections by hand and etch it using etching. And then we're going to make a working Arduino. And we're going to make another working Arduino on a uh, strip board, which fits the, the bill too. So... I think we can really nail going through understanding how a microcontroller is wired up. I think that's going to be cool. And it's going to work. It's, I think it's uh, we can use that. 
So that's for for the day of electronics. And we're gonna try to squeeze in some some keycat in there. Otherwise, uh, do as much as we can on keycat. But otherwise, teach teach electronics like different skill sets on that around that, including the the three D printed okay. power boards. Yeah. Now for that sounds the, pretty cool. So you're making the Arduino part itself? Yeah, man. We'll do it. There's easy ways to like the simplest Arduino is the at mega chip broken to and then like 10 15 wires and like four components yeah so that'll okay. be a perfect thing and learn so, so let me show you this yeah oh so you this this is the stairs where it came up okay and this is the door and so this is the, the room over here oh wow. and, and right now it's kind of a uh, yeah, it's a pretty spacious room. I could put a bed or two up here. Holy cow. And then it has this other door. It's got another door over here, and this leads into the attic space. And I turn on the switch, and I have a pretty sizable attic in here. Well, holy cow, you can fit like 50 people in there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I could put bunk beds in here, and we could have a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, for sure. As long as the roof can hold it. Yeah, no, that's that's perfect. So, for example, if somebody wanted to to stay, they can't afford a hotel, but they want to come to this, just throw a sleeping bag down, and I mean that's that's good. It's it's private space. It's like semi-private space almost. Yeah, you know, I I was just looking today, and I have some uh, cots, you know, that I can. I have two cots, and I've got some sleeping bags. I've got an air bag. Um, you know, I, 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 I there, there's stuff here. And uh, I'm not even showing you the workshop yet. Okay. Um, You're going to scuffle okay, it over there? Okay, it kind of froze up on me. No, that's good. The house, house is great. And uh, I just wanted to show you this over here. Because this is like a... Well, you can't see it right now. But, but this, this space right over here is another space over here that they... You know, it's part of the house, and it's got a big, long area. I was cleaning it up today, just getting it ready. Um, I don't know if it's screen. necessary. We could stick somebody in here. Wow. And then, uh, yeah, see, your camera then, froze up. Are you are you further away from the internet, or or what's going? And on? I'm not sure. You can see that over there, but that's the workshop. No, your camera fro froze up. Are you farther from the internet? Your internet cut out. Yeah, lost lost you there. Yeah, you back? Yeah, 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 I'm here. All right. Yeah, so, so anyway, it kind of crapped out on me. I don't know uh, which, which side, side either yours or mine, but 
finishing. Um, where do I see? Uh, there you are. Yeah, uh, is that because your internet connection was weaker outside, or what is that? I can't hear your voice cut out. Your voice. No sound. No sound. Can't hear you. Is it let's see how is it now can you hear me now but I can't hear you I don't know what happened you might have been hacked <laughs> I can't hear you man that's funny um, let me see what's going on that I can't hear you let me try to shut some tabs, maybe. <coughs> shut Jitsi meat. I don't know, man. Uh, let's see. Nope. How about now? No. That's weird. Um, let me try to call you back on Hangouts, maybe. Let's see. Let's see if I can try call you. Tom and Gene's house. This is not Wheels Inc. If this is a survey or a yeah, I can't hear you. I, s I see your video, but I can't hear you. Okay, I've got you on uh, on my phone. Okay. 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 Can you hear me on the computer audio now? Um. Not. Can you shut down your phone to see if you can? Your phone to see if they can. I'll put it on mute. Yeah. All right. Now the phone is muted. Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. 
Okay, I'll hang up the phone. Nice. You can still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, cool. All right. Well, yeah. now uh, I'll, I'll show you a little bit of the front porch. This is a, uh, well, <laughs> I've got, all I've got is a flashlight. I, I'm, I'm watch, trying to watch what you can see. Yeah. But uh, this yeah. is it. They got the garden over there, a little ways away. You can't even see that. Yeah. But uh, at any rate, you got lots of parking over here. Um, oh, Katarina suggested see. that we can make it a, not in those words, of course, but she suggested that we make it a 3D printing gu guns, gold, and grub kind of event. <laughs> but uh, Perm in, so anyway, printing and permaculture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's an idea. Oh, now I got the uh, motion lights are on. Yeah, yeah. So you can oh, that's see good. a little better. I got yeah, man. Porch area yeah. over here, and yeah. I got a little porch over here. No, it's perfect. That's just this good. is good. This is great facilities. Yeah. Yeah, so so anyway, it it's a it should be pretty good for hosting, you know, a dozen people or so. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Uh, and and I haven't even showed you the workshop. The workshop is about 1500 square feet. Right now I have my tractor in there and uh and I've got a little office slash bedroom in there. I could convert it either way, put another bedroom in there. It has a, another toilet in there that that you know, I I just got to get water in there and then it'll work. So that'll be a second toilet. Okay. Um, Can yeah. you go into the workshop, so, uh, or you got no internet there? No internet. If okay. I, I need to move, I need to move the modem on the far side of the house, close to the workshop, and then I think it'll reach. Okay. And then the other question is, what do they do? Like wireless hotspots? Can we get maybe a couple of those? Well, I mean, we have to pay for it, but. What's do they have good hot spots that work there? I, I don't get good cellular reception here. Well, what I have now, right now, that's internet, it's by satellite, right? Now, that, uh, the satellite, I could I could get it and use it. I, I, I could take my phone and I can convert, convert it into a hot spot, you know, but well, I don't but know how good it'll be. Service. Yeah, but if you have phone service, we should be able to get a like if we need to to get more, more stuff, more memory, because when we're doing, for example, the Raspberry Pi tablet, I actually think it's feasible that we do a phone module in there too. You can get a phone module for forty dollars for a Pi for Raspberry Pi. So in other words, for forty four dollars, oh, wow. you can turn the tablet into something that you can actually make calls with over the, the regular networks. Uh, but anyway, uh, okay. there's a whole bunch of different topics. Like th that's a cool research project, but we're gonna need internet for people to surf. Uh, otherwise, we're limited. So, what are the options for hotspots? Like, if we were to buy like a gig, you know, gig hotspot or whatever, or on your well, phone. What are the main the thing is, we, we yeah, we'd need some sort of a router or something like a phone that would act as a hotspot. And and the other things we need to do is mount it up high to where we could get better reception, because okay. right now the reception is it, it's it's kind of spotty here. I get very weak reception. I can get some, but you know it's kind of spotty. Okay. Um. What can you do on your phone, for example? You can get what speed? I don't know. We were just trying it a while ago. How, how do you measure speed on the phone? I, I, I don't really measure speed, but um, if I the main main thing is if I hold it up at the right angle, you know, uh, it it'll get pretty decent reception. But all I know is reception as far as uh, you know, just just as far as conversations. And I, I can do Skype on the phone and stuff like that. That works, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. And that's the phone is separate from your satellite. Right. So we would have two of those. And then, but then if other people have phones, like, obviously we can, if we wanted to, if we needed more internet, we can still get another hotspot, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Whoever, whoever has a phone could have their own hotspot. 
or they could have their own uh, cellular access. Yeah. Um, let's see. For 4G LTE hotspot. So what service do you have there? Do you have 4G LTE? Uh, well, let me pull up my phone and I'll, I'll tell you. Um, I think it's 4G LTE. Hotspot and tethering. Um, like the question is, how good is your 4G coverage? When we say 4G, does that mean a particular network, or or any network? Well, well, put, put, put it this way: the, the mobile phone towers they broadcast different signals, mm -hmm. and the the low spectrum signal is going to be like the three series, you know, the 3G type signals. And then the 4G is, is a new one. The LTE is, is the, the latest and greatest. And then I do get some 4G LTE out here, but, but you have to you know point the phone in the right direction. You can't just carry it around anywhere and have it work. Okay. Could we set up... Can we work on setting up something that that's... I would say we probably want to plan on... So you've got your network, which is like 10 meg. But if there's like six people, I mean, we're going to bog it down pretty bad, right? Six to 12 people. Um, 12 people would bog it down. Uh, so I, I think it's a good idea to look into that. What's a practical way we can look into, like, can you, like, say, dedicate your phone to that? Or, or should we just get another hotspot and wireless router connected to the hotspot that, that then tra transmits? Or the hotspot itself is supposed to do that? Well, the hotspot hot is supposed to be a gateway, you know, both transmits and receives. Yeah, from but the say, internet. Okay, say it's like outside in a place that's like... When we're doing the workshop session, we would have like the like the R&D stuff happening. Like when we do the classroom sessions, that would be in a workshop, right? Right, right, right yeah. Where we're working. So is there a place you can put this up at that you'd have good access, like really good signal, and we can use that as a second source? Yeah, yeah that would be a good idea. You use that as a, the, the secondary. So where would you, and, where and would you put it? Where would you put it? Um, well, I would, I, would, I would put it somewhere facing the mobile phone tower so it gets the best reception. And then, then have it to where I could broadcast the, you know, the wireless signal into the workshop. Now, the workshop, it is a metal workshop. So I, I don't know how much that's going to affect it. Mm -hmm. You know, but, but it is a metal building. Okay. How much is, like, one gig of wireless? So this is basically we're buying, like, one gig of data or something? Yeah. Well, if I use track phone which is what, what my phone uses, uh, one gig is $10. So it's not a big outlay. That's good. Okay, so I would ask you, do you think you can test that and see what kind of, so that you use that? Can you test that right now? Do you, so with your phone, can you turn it on a hotspot and then connect to it with, an, with the internet? With your computer? Well, that's an interesting idea. <laughs> <laughs> but the only thing is, if I do that, I'm going to have to drop this connection. Okay. All right. Let's well, see. I'm, I'm going I'm to I'm put my shoes on. Well, let, let, I guess I should uh, get that connection going first of all. Yeah. And let's well, see maybe, how that works. Yeah, I got to get going because I got to I gotta do the announcement. for. I, I, we really need to publish it like tomorrow, and I, I need to really uh, wordsmith it and edit it quite a bit. Maybe you can check that after we hang out. Uh, hang up here but I would say yeah let's plan on having a thing where it's like 10 bucks for a gig of data I mean a gig is gonna last like one good day right maybe like with like 12 people 100 mega well, the, the, big, the, big, big, the, the big thing on, on uh, data is the more video conferencing video conferencing is the biggest thing that chews up data yeah. sending all these frames of video back and forth Audio and text and, and web, it's no, no big deal. But video chews up a lot of bandwidth. How much, let's see, how much web surfing is one gigabyte? Let's see. It's going to be quite a bit. 
I, I, I would say, you know, two, two or three gigabytes. Well, I mean, how many days are we actually talking about people being here for the workshop? Nine. Nine days. Okay. So so let, let's just count on one gigabyte per day. So you're talking 100 bucks. I mean, that's yeah. no big deal. Okay. Yeah, the, no problem. Range. Yeah, that should, um, I'm thinking like how much, like wiki, so say wiki, I don't know, how do you trace that? Um, how long, let me see, how long can you, with one gigabyte, let's see what it says, about 20 hours, they say, oh, okay, that, but that's per person, uh, but 20 hours, I mean, yeah, so you got 10 people, two hours per person, I mean, two hours of just web surfing, that sounds, sounds about right, yeah? Yeah, and, uh, the, the, the thing is, we'll just have to tell everybody to, not do video don't skype yeah, yeah. and don't, facebook and all like don't do don't do youtube videos right okay yeah because those yeah those can eat up like you know 50 mag easily a pop and stuff like that so is there right. a way to block youtube on on the on the hotspot it probably is i yeah, i, yeah, I yeah. haven't we'll just, yeah okay yeah, okay, about 20 hours, yeah, definitely, yeah, great, great, let's do it. Um, do you know, yeah, so test that out and see what speed you get, and then that might be the perfect solution right there. We're just done with that, just have another hotspot. So yeah, between like your 10 meg and another line, it should be pretty decent. Um, yeah, uh, tell, tell me this, our conversation right now, you getting a little bit of latency, is that right, or what? No, I don't see it. Okay. Well, this is this is going through the satellite now. I, I could take this and I could boost this signal some, and and uh, maybe see if I can't get it over there to the to the workshop as well. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we we want to have if we're doing the R and D in a workshop, like if we're doing respect, yeah. for example, for the Pi tablet. How do you build a build a phone with a Pi tablet? I mean, that's going to be some web surfing. Yeah, we want to we want to have two of the lines going in there. Yeah. Yeah. As far as latency, no, the latency is pretty good. I can I can hardly detect it. How about you? Can you see that it's latency or? I can't. No, that see seems it. fine to me. There's a little, little there's a little bit of a delay between when I talk to you and and when you respond, but otherwise, I mean, it seems okay. Yeah, seems pretty good. All right, great. Um, what else? What else? So regarding um, you got on space in a workshop. I guess you clean stuff up. Uh, can you t do you have any nice pictures because yeah I mean according to Katarina's deal we can frame it as learn 3d printing but also we're you know we're on this permacultural kind of farm we have some pictures and some stuff of any other stuff that we can see over there as you know, for people who are interested in permaculture or not really I, I could send it to you yeah I, I uh, yeah I, I can send you some yeah, because we can say this is an opportunity to talk about 3D printers, but also we're interested in other holistic living kind of endeavors. So that's definitely a <clears throat> get the 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 G cubed crowd <laughs> 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 as well. Because there's probably a lot a lot of them by you. Because you're like Dallas is all military; they're all hiding out in their little bunkers <laughs> in, the, in the countryside. <laughs> <laughs> like kind of like yourself you know <laughs> what? Uh, all right I, 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 resemble, I resemble that remark <laughs> you resemble that remark remark <laughs> yeah 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 um, <laughs> um so another thing is what do you think any further thoughts regarding your ability to do welder stuff because i actually thought about an interesting thing so we are, we want to build an electrode holder like i showed you last time the diy electrode holder basically the stick stick thing mm -hmm. there's aluminum welding rods and what if we do uh, did i tell you ever tell you about mig casting no Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how you can take, take a MIG and you can cast metal with it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, why don't we try, so we make our welder on 24-volt battery packs. Let's try to, to do a little cast of like a star or like a little gear using the stick 
with an electrode and, and yeah. we're just depositing metal into a form. Because you can do that with plaster of Paris. That would work. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, so you, you can't make do it for mold steel. With... Yeah. You can't do it for steel, but they do have welding electrodes that are aluminum. So, and and plaster of Paris res huh? can can handle aluminum. Be so, so how would you do aluminum? Would you, would you have a electrode that would or, or a rod that would have like a coating on the outside of it, or would you have to have a gas going over to coat it? No, for just the a coating. I mean, just whatever. Google uh, aluminum welding rod. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see. Okay. They have their flux on the outside welding rod. I mean, it'll be messy and and silly, but I mean, it. I think it'll produce a product that you can possibly you make some very very simple rough shapes with it yeah um <clears throat> okay well I, I don't know if you've seen it but i've been making some progress on um selecting the igbt and and trying to um figure out the parameters for all that nice and, and so so I've, I've been documenting stuff on my log nice um let me see this thing this pull the video cheap chains so we're going for so tell me briefly so there's igbt's what are you doing for the inductor yeah i uh, basically was was selecting the igbt itself because <clears throat> i needed to find one that could handle the current and the voltage that we're looking at so uh, i looked at, at the power mosfets and uh, I saw one forum that was saying if you're switching low voltage, a power MOSFET is probably a good solution. But I didn't find one that could handle up to like 100 volts. And uh, I wouldn't be comfortable putting one there that couldn't handle at least 100 volts on there okay. on the output. But don't we know that like IGBTs, you can get like 600 volt, like 600 amps yeah, to, like, for like five yeah, bucks? To, yeah, you, yeah. And I ordered those. I ordered uh, six of those last night. Oh great! They're they're two hundred, but but now they they're specific. They're, they're two hundred amps. They can handle, but it has to be pulsed, so it can't handle a continuous two hundred amp current. It has to be you know like a PWM output. Um, with two hundred amps on average or or peak? No peak. Well, peak. that that's just uh, yeah at the peak of the pulse, right? And and okay. uh, it's only like. A, uh, like less than 60 amps average um so so anyway uh I, I, i've been looking at the you know a lot of different different things i've been trying to put it in my log but about welding and how do you weld it and and uh we need to figure out the voltage and and i, I think we could do some very simple updates to it that we could get uh, current feedback and also voltage output feedback and there's some neat things you can do, like when you go, go to start up the, the arc uh, and, and you go to strike the initial arc, uh, even though you have it set, say, at uh, 60 amps, you need to, to have the initial uh, arc where, where it's what they call a hot start, where you can actually supplement it with some more current in order to get the arc started. And, and it's, it's basically a current thing. You, you look at it from the perspective of current, not voltage. Okay. And uh, so, so it, that that that's going to be important to get a, a a little current loop in in the output of it, just so we can get some feedback and know what what current is trying to do. And then from the Arduino, uh, I did find some code, <clears throat> and I, I posted some of that on the web page. Um, and so this is code about how you go about uh, uh, starting a a PWM, and it has PWM controllers. Now this is in the Arduino Mega. It, it's got um, like like three different PWM controllers with six different outputs, and uh, they they control a little bit differently. Two of them work one way, and one of them works a different way. But but I mean that 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 is, is the foundation for something really good for us for what we need to do, and that's directly in, in the Arduino without having a shield on it. Nice. I, I think I think you mentioned that there is a shield for it that will do that as well. Oh yeah, there's tons of shields like that. Um, that's great. Love it. So how how much are these IGBTs? Uh, I got six of them for ten bucks. From where? eBay. Uh, when are they arriving? 
Um, it's a U.S. source, and, and I just ordered it last night. I don't know exactly when it's arriving. should be here this week. Well, holy cow, that's great. So if you, uh, yes. if you parallel them, can you get more amperage? Um, you, you know, if, if all the conditions are exactly perfectly right, you could. But, you know, uh, if you put some sort of a resistive load on the output of it, then you could get a better averaging. You, you could get it to where they would parallel better. Because um, if you have each one of them has a little resistive load on it before it goes to the final output, then that will allow it to adjust the voltage up and down. Because we're going to be driving it from a current perspective. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so, so the little resistance on the output will help, you know, uh, uh, it, it, it'll help uh, share the load between two IGBTs. Anyway, I, I, I also ordered an oscilloscope because uh, I, I want to go through and start testing this stuff too. Now, I, don't, I don't know exactly how I'm going to test it unless I do uh, scale it, uh, like test it at one-tenth scale and see if I can just uh, drive it at, at one-tenth and then when we go to do the final welder output, scale it all up to one-to-one. -one. I, I, I can't, I can't uh, just in, indoors with a oscilloscope and all that. I can't test with live welding rods on it. <laughs> I mean, I probably can, but that, that'll be the final test. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at, at like welding electrodes welding rods it looks like they're not flux or at least I'm not finding much that is flux coated so you have to use uh, they're called low temperature let's see for high temperature aluminum welding rods No, I don't. I'm not seeing them actually. I, so these ones are the types which you use a flame to to do. Um, but maybe we let's see. But that's not related to our uh, power source, though. No, no, no. Because we were looking yeah. today when we yeah yeah when we were look, talking to the guys today, we were looking at what's a good application that we can show a really cool application of the welder. What do you think we could do? Ah, well, that, that's a good question. I, I hadn't really thought about yeah, that. What, what gauge steel? Are we talking about? What gauge steel are we talking about welding? We we talked about taking two two eight millimeter rods and welding them together, but but welding them together to make one. Of, that's a practical experiment that we. It's not really practical, but it's. Uh, was a cool experiment. Yeah, so I don't know. We don't have a great application for um, for that, unless we can figure out a steel resistant refractory material in the meantime. Which that shit's all secret, and I don't know. We can do like green sand type of stuff, uh, but I, I've searched for it quite a bit, and it's really hard to find that. Like people say one thing or another, and you can't really get a good answer on. And what's going to resist? Well, it will work. The green sand will work for steel. But how will it work in the case of the, the welding application? Does that like mess it up much more or not? Because uh, I have not seen anywhere this idea. The, the point is I've never seen anywhere the MIG, MIG casting concept. And I really don't understand why. So it's one of those things that probably are fringe enough that nobody does it. But I think it's a when you can work it out to a to like getting it working properly. I mean, I think it's an extremely powerful technique. 3D print and then MIG weld, but you need the refractory. The only way that's sure bet refractory to do it is is the same thing they do with investment casting, which is these multiple layers of these refractories that they dip and it's it takes a long time to prepare the form. But once you have it, you can do yeah. it. Um, but yeah, don't have that technology available right now. But anyway, um, I'm glad you're making so much progress on it. Did you consider, like, so I'm seeing, like, with the specs on your IGBTs, I mean, you're barely, I mean, it's 
Yeah, it's it's doing it, but why not like supersize it so instead of like a two dollar MOSFET it, or IGBT, it's like a five dollar one that's like way over overkill. Have you thought of that too, or no, or no? I, I I I've been looking for that, but but the thing is that generally speaking, when you when you go from the the low power or the medium power MOSFETs like the one I ordered, hmm. and you go up to the next one, they they cast it in a in a block in a plastic module. Mm. And it, it and then the one I was telling you about that's really cool because you can bolt it to a heat sink and it, and it's all modular and it, it, it's very nice packaging, but the thing is they they're pretty expensive. They started around thirty bucks. Uh, they, if if you find them used, you know they're like thirty to to uh, twenty twenty five thirty bucks. And what's, and uh, but but those, those are, uh, well, they they go way up in current. They go like up to six hundred amps, and you know, it, it goes some awesome current. So so they they would really be better for a welding application, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and maybe maybe that's what we ought to consider because if we're only talking about you know, if if we have to have say two of those for a welder, then then that would bump it up. But that would make it r ridiculous. I mean, that, that would bump it up by 60 bucks if we're talking used parts. If we're talking new, I don't know what that would do. Um, yeah, okay, and because okay, I mean, if we're doing all that, I mean, we, we may as well see. See, the thing is, what we, we got two different ways we're looking at it. <clears throat> this, this way we're doing it because we can switch the battery current directly, but we have to be able to switch the high current. But if we do the other way, we can use a transformer. And then we could switch the low current high voltage and run it to a transformer, which would transform it down to the, the low voltage high current. And and uh, that way we could use a smaller IGBT to do the same thing. But we'd have to have a transformer in the mix. Mm -hmm. And here we're going with direct switching. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah well let's i mean it sounds like yeah these ones you select yeah i see what you're saying these these bigger ones are yeah they're they're expensive um and when i say 600 amp 600 volt is 600 amp and 600 volt that's peak like not the average it's peak right um well those things <clears throat> you know they I, I don't know whether that's peak or continuous because those, those things are they have a much better uh, um, how can you say the the, the way it, it bolts to the heat sink yeah they have a much more solid uh, heat sink attachment yeah so I mean yeah. and that, that's what you're really talking about you're talking about the transfer of heat when you start switching yeah. a lot of current then, then you, uh, you're gonna end up with a across the collector to emitter you can have a certain voltage there. And the more current you pass, and it's more power you're going to dissipate. I mean, it's just a straightforward equation. So, so what that means is, if you're going to you're going to switch more current, then you have to have more heat sink uh, capability. Right. For the the ones that you you got, what kind of heat sink capacity are we talking about? Like we're talking about like 50 watts. No, nah, it, it, yeah, it's not not very much. It's it's a little to. Uh, 220 packaging. It's it's a little little package like that, and it screws to heat sink. I mean, it's not very much. Like 10 watts, 20 watts. Do you know? Yeah, I I, I, I don't know. The package itself would determine how much power you can dissipate through it. How much power does TO220 dissipate? Let me see if I can send you the actual uh, uh, thing that I ordered. Oh no, I lost my mouse. Where's my mouse? And this is through eBay. Yeah. My eBay uh, purchase history. Yeah, TO220. That's the uh, kind of uh, package it's on. Yeah, I'm seeing something up. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at a 
some thread it says 20 watts max dissipation for that um, and how efficient should our welder be at this switching like what, what's your expectation is it gonna be like 80 90 percent or 95 even or I've seen some references that, that many of the welders many of the IDBQ welders they rate them in the mid 80s some of them I've seen go up to like 93 percent efficiency of course, what, what that means is the more efficient you run it, then the less power you're going to dissipate. That means the less uh, fan you have to have, and just it just makes the whole thing easier to deal with. Because mm -hmm. um, power dissipation is, is, is just a pain you got to deal with. You know, you got to have a heat sink that can, you know, have enough fins on it to give you, and then you got to have a fan to have enough airflow to dissipate the heat. Right, and if we're doing. Uh 50 amps at 24 volts we're talking about one kilowatt so we're gonna have to do like if it's 90 percent it's like a hundred watts of heat dissipation already I mean are we ready for that did you did you think about heat sinks what what kind of heat sink are we gonna I, I haven't gotten there yet because I'm, I'm just on the trying to get an idea of okay the the uh, semiconductors and how we're gonna drive it and then the heat sinks is going to be an afterthought. You just have to, to say, okay, we're going to have to have this much heat sink and that much fan for Okay, it. well, I can tell you a solution for that right now. That let's do the same thing we do on our current uh, heater element, which dissipates. So we have a small 40-40 fan on the, the extruder that we built, right? And that has a standard 40-40 yep. fan, uh, fan heat sink. Let's use exactly that since we already use that in the extruder. It's a 40 by 40 millimeter heat sink, and you can put the fan directly right on it. And that that's good for, that dissipates power from a 40, uh, it's good for about 40 watts actually, because you can have that at temperature okay. without overheating. Uh, yeah, at, is, that, is that aluminum or what? Aluminum, yeah. That's good for at least okay. 40 watts, yeah. That should be fine then. We just we need should. to find a flat surface on it where we can screw this semiconductor onto it. Yeah, yeah. And then the we back need is it flat uh, and the front is ribs. So th we, we've got the solution already. And then, then we need to be able to mount it mount so it. so that the semiconductor can be in the circuit board, in, in the printed circuit board, and have the heat sink on, on the back yeah, side of it. See, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's cool. That's doable. Um, we can. For that kind of, a, does the TL220 have a set, like a screw to hold it to the? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll put a screw right through that, uh, bind it on thermal paste. That's cool, man. And then we got 40 watts right there. So that's, uh, that would give us, we probably need a couple of them if you're talking about switching, switching uh, 100 or a kilowatt, right? So we, we need like two of them. You mean two two heat sinks? Two heat sinks. I mean, I know one of them does forty watts. I don't know how much we can push it beyond forty watts. I don't know. Okay, that I just sent you a link to the uh, transistor that I'm talking about. It's just a little little square transistor like that, little rectangular one. Yeah. And where are you thinking that one of them would be enough for for one welder? I'm, I'm going to experiment, experiment with it and see. see. When, when, when I receive it, I'll start. What's it? You said it's rated as 50 amps? <clears throat> well, when you go and look at it, as far as the, the pulse amps, it, it's rated at 200. But that's, I, and, and that, I tried to get a good understanding of pulse, but all I got is some sort of reference saying uh, that's PWM. So I, I don't I don't know if that's gonna even though it says two hundred I would say conservatively the best case it would maybe give you one hundred but that that case and those leads pushing a hundred amps through it that's kind of a stretch I think no no <laughs> can't do that I mean for those kinds of leads I mean you... I mean they're just little bitty I mean little little bitty wires you know? right right I so mean, uh, so realistically we're probably speaking about like three of them per welder right to handle yeah 
And, and that's if, if they will pal parallel correctly. And that's the other wild card is we need to, we need to somehow make them uh, parallel because they seen, need to share the load. Yeah. For the Arduino controlled power transistors, did you see any of them that could drive? Like if you drive two pins, can you drive just one with just two pins? Like that are not synchronized? So you mean drive it? I, I, think, I think we won't be able to drive it directly from the Arduino. You'd have to put another transistor in between. Because they do have, yeah, okay. At this power, you're not allowed to no, do it because there are other ones that do do allow you to drive it directly from Arduino, but they might be. Yeah. I don't know what power they are. Um, I mean, that, that's that's basically what a shield board would do, you know. Yeah. The shield would have a transistor in it that would drive the the final transistor. Well, how much? Um, how many more components is it to to do the drive? Is it just another one one transistor? Or is um. It I think there'll be some transistor and some other components, maybe resistors here and there, you know. Because yeah. mm -hmm. all, all, all resistors do is they limit the current and they, well, they, they adjust voltages and do, just depends on the need. And then uh, I still would like to have some sort of filtration on the output. I'd like to dr drive it at about 20 kilohertz so we could get the, you know, a good uh, usage out of any kind of uh, uh, inductors or, or capacitors that we use you know because that they, they work better at higher frequencies of course right um and so do we get one of these for the whole class or everybody's going to be building one well I, if i can get get this thing and, and work on a prototype and get the prototype beaten out soon enough I'd, I'd like to do one for each person. I mean, I, I don't see any reason why we couldn't. We're not, we're not talking about that much cost of parts. But the thing is, we don't have the battery power to drive it with, though, because we were planning on six cells per student, so that's 18 bucks per student for the batteries, and we were going to stack them together between all the people to get the welder. So yeah. how do we do that? So we say we're teaching you how to do this if you want to actually do the welder you'd have to get more batteries with the tools that and skills you got from this workshop but we give them yeah this, and we were talking circuit. We, we were talking about offering them that as, as like an option to be able to buy the extra batteries to make it work but okay. we could show them how it works in workshop, and if they want to take it home with them then they need to buy the batteries well, we should probably have everybody work on their system, so get the very basic system. Um, let's plan on having the Arduino that we're going to etch on that power board. So we'll have the Arduino. We just upload the code to it. So there's upload yeah. code and Arduino learnings there. And then um, people take that system home. And then if they want to make it work, they need to get a few more batteries because one of the battery sets is going to get like they have to at least double the battery because the I mean, those batteries are rated for 30 amps peak, the, the Panasonic ones. So each each pack of 20, uh -huh. 24 volts would get you up to 30 amps for a short time, like for five minutes. But now, now the one thing I did notice, and, and I, I posted in my log, is the, the some of the parameters on the batteries, and and if you uh, do a high current drain on those batteries, it it, it can uh, basically destroy the batteries faster. Of course, of course. So this is just experimental. So yes, for like you can do it for like half a minute just to show that it works with like two battery sets. But what you'd want to do is like just like the cordless welder have like whatever 30, 40 batteries. Um, yeah. yeah, like five or six, at least six of them or so for practical, getting towards practical purposes. But the deal is we, we teach the people how to do it. So do you, um, what do you think about the, can we put, put it on a 3D printed circuit board? Because we can print up to six by 12 boards, even a lot bigger. Because we do, we do 4D printing. We do the, the thing, stand it up on a platform, do it in an L-shaped. So for example, our control panel, we bit, we print it bent and then we fold it that's 40 printing fold it out just with heat 
Uh, so you can get from a 6x6 bed, you can get a 6x12 print very easily, or you can do even a 6x24 if you just fold it around four times. Know what I mean? Mm. You, you put in the, yeah. the perforation pattern, and then with a heat gun, it just basically unfolds by itself. I don't think we need a very big circuit board. It's just, it isn't going to be uh, real complicated. Enough to handle a couple of, uh, probably we plan on real estate for two, two transistors, two heat sinks. Um, there's the terminals, so you got chunky terminals, uh, input yeah. output, enough room for the Arduino board. So we just mounted with four screws. We had, we can have, we can design that whole power panel. I was thinking that a cool thing would be to actually, yeah, we're shifting this to like just a lot of design work. We're all just rapid prototyping and designing stuff. Uh, but yeah, that, that could be really cool. Um, sounds good. So, but in the meantime, <laughs> Yeah, how far away is the uh, CNC circuit mill? Well, we have one. We have one, but but it's too big to build. Like we we didn't have to have like a dedicated work. And we have a working one that's we published a paper on it. It it all works, but it requires. Yeah. Uh, the one we did is a five two four. It's a six axis system. It's got dual on each axis, so that's like a big project yeah. on its own. So, but for the milling part which i think gets you short of that because okay with what you learn in this workshop you can completely build it what we'll do in a workshop is take a 555 motor that's what we were talking about today take a 555 motor put a one millimeter milling bit right. and show that you can do cnc drilling you might be able to do like a tiny milling path with it i mean they do make with that kind of motor they do make pretty good circuit mills like you can get one on on bang good that uses that kind of motor directly coupled to a drill bit through without a spindle it's just directly coupled for just circuits um, okay. so we'll learn that we'll design we were thinking about designing the actual holder for that so it's a free cat design exercise you're rapidly prototyping that so you completely made your own cnc hole drill from scratch and that kind of technique you can completely do to the uh, extend that to the circuit mill because we'll include bed leveling in that how do you do that because um, you need the toughest part about it is probably the bed leveling part w with a mill like that. But we've done that. We we did it by just uh, electrical contact and you're probing. You're using the probing. It's also it's found in Marlin, but you just probe the bed surface to get a complete level. Um, hmm. okay. We can do it, but it, it's I mean it's too. That's like a whole project on itself. It's doesn't fit with like this integrated skill set we're doing 3d printing design collaboration electronics and, and then more design with like the well the welder the, the battery packs and then a project being the pi tablet uh for we talked about a camera stabilizer uh camera a light uh -huh. and uh, tripod is some of the modules <clears throat> to build around it and and i got excited about the cell phone because i think we should probably do so we said that the first day of the camp we're gonna get people's feedback like okay do you what do you want to do like should we go on amazon and order all the materials for like what projects do they want to do around the the raspberry pi tablet so that's how we were gonna uh -huh. source parts for it. but what should we say right now because i got to come up with a budget what am i charging people to do this so what i was thinking i mean it's definitely 200 bucks in the cnc three axis d3d universal um and i was thinking about a hundred bucks for project materials for the pi tablet which means screen and and the pi and probably a camera module so if you like around a hundred bucks there um so what should we put the budget beyond that it's like kind of low maybe like 50 bucks for all the other materials maybe 20 to 50 bucks for all the other materials so what would the budget be for the basic welder welder components? So we know we're going to have everybody build regardless of the battery pack. Because the battery pack is 18 bucks for the six batteries. About. Um, we, we, need, we need to have, yeah, your, your, basic, your basic batteries, but you need to also have the, the option for the other batteries as well. But as far as the, the welder itself, um, I, I, I have no idea on cost yet. I mean, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out a design and what else is going to go into it, whether we're going to need a transformer or not. Um, and, and, you know, we're talking about uh, those terminals, how are we going to have to buy those terminals? And I guess we're talking about printed circuit board, mountable 
terminals they would have on there, right? That's called um, getting set, uh, quarter inch set screws and 3D printing the terminals, like I told you last time. Okay. So it's like, you know, 10 cents a terminal. Okay. So then we're talking uh, components, uh, battery, talking batteries, wires, and plastic, 3, 3D printing plastic in your terminals. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't have an idea on that. We, we could call it, you said it's going to be 20 something dollars for the batteries? Yeah. Yeah, well, let's, I, I, let's, I don't know. let's see this. What about let's let's do this because what we do know. What about switching a light? Uh, that's a kind of circuit which would be a a rectifier. Just controlling a one twenty AC light with the Arduino. Well, that that part of it, you know, we could do with the components we're going to order for the uh, welder. Exactly. We could do it with that and just just have the out that same output go to just a light bulb yeah and pwm it and there you are but but then the welder is the the hard application that's the one yeah, we have to since we don't know that how about we do this we'll we'll say we'll charge people like i would say like 20 bucks for the other components like for this the power board and then for the welder uh -huh. that'll be an extra thing that people can buy like and we'll decide yeah, that. Yeah. Okay, okay, have one, one. Yeah, yeah, like you're saying, have one group effort to do the welder and then have optionals that they can buy the different parts for it. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. So that the, okay. the bill materials for that. And and for the light dimmer part, like let's let's send people home with the uh, IGBTs definitely. Like that's a cool thing. Um so like I would say like for now the certain material cost for that is like say twenty bucks, but if we do the welder it might be not like fifty bucks more or hundred bucks more or whatever, if people want to take a prototype yeah. welder home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for right now. I'll I, 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 would also, I, I would also defer the pricing on the options. You know, make the optional stuff something we can figure out later. But right now we can quote them on the basics. Yeah. Quote them on the basics. We're just going to quote 20 bucks for the power board, which is about right. Uh, I'll do the detailed, you know, detailed bill of materials on that. Now, one thing is we have to include an Arduino in, in that yeah, also. Yeah. But that's the Arduino. Like, we're expecting that the Arduinos we will make will absolutely work. Because the ones that we can make using perf boards and the yeah. chips, I mean, they're only going to be like a few bucks, like perf board a dollar and um, Arduino chip is like a dollar too. So um, it's only like five bucks in components for that. But if what we'll probably do is, is get some Arduino backups, like get some Unos or whatever. But yeah, yeah. So we have those. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's included. Ideally, we're using the ones we made because that's also more powerful. Like we made this completely from scratch kind of deal which is a great education uh, exercise um and gets people really involved now, in the one one thing the one thing i did mention a while ago was that the uh the arduino mega was the one that had the three pwm controllers in it now i don't know if the if the uno has it has one or not i think yeah it, it does it has pwm but um you know we already have the mega on the universal controller so we can have the backup for the ones we're going to make not working is going to be the mega. So we can okay. just just uh, put in a signal into the... We can design a board so that signal can be coming from the onboard Arduino or from the, the mega that we have on the controller. Okay. Yeah. So we have a redundancy on, uh, on the Arduino because uh, we'll definitely have the one from the universal controller. The idea of the universal control is kind of cool because you're showing that, oh, wow, this thing can do so many different things. And then an onboard design is like, oh, wow, that's so cool. I made it and it actually works kind of deal. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah, I, I got a pretty good idea. Yeah, we can do that. So we'll defer the materials for the Pi tablet, like exactly what people want. Because some people might want to go like, I de like 
I suspect the, the project might get hijacked to everyone wanting to make a phone. I, I would have hijacked it to a phone because I, I really want a phone. <laughs> but we'll let people decide like what components do they want for the, the Raspberry Pi. But the baseline is you got to have a touch okay. screen. You got to have a, you got to have a <clears throat> Raspberry Pi. So you say we need to get a SIM card and a kind of to make to be, in order to make a mobile phone. What about the service that's going to? Uh, well, I mean that's. Uh, well, of course that's on top of that, but just having the hardware is forty. Okay, well, well I, like, I, I I've used that track phone uh, and it, it has worked pretty good. And that and using that. You can very granularly, you can buy uh, uh, data or you can buy text messages or you can buy phone. You can d buy them all separately and just buy just as much as you need. So that might yeah. be a good avenue for it. Yeah, I, I did. I have track phone right now myself. It's great. I found something actually even better uh, the other day because the track phone is expiring for me like tomorrow. Uh, let's yeah. see. Um, phone. Let me just... Oh, let's see. Uh, track phone data plan. Hold on. I just was looking at it a couple of days ago, but I found a plan that cost ten dollars <laughs> per <laughs> three months. <laughs> no, it's like <laughs> no, it's a thing where it's like minimal. But I, I right now I'm not using the phone since we got the the gig internet here. I'm not using the phone a lot, so I've been using it minimally. So I was gonna actually get this even leaner plan than track phone, pay as you go. So yeah. I, I do have the hundred dollar track phone plan right now for the year, <laughs> which is ten bucks a month. But this thing is three bucks a month, so I'm gonna downgrade because I just haven't been using my data or voice. Um, if I need it, I can add always add minutes. So anyway, uh, yeah. that's cool. But yeah, that's a definite route to, route to work with. And then your phone costs are like zero. And then you can upgrade the Pi, and you can not worry about breaking phone screens and stuff. Yeah. So that's I want to do that for real myself. Uh, well, this sounds good. Sounds good. So I think we got a good idea of what's happening. Uh, I can put together uh, the basic idea of the budget. Yeah, because we're going to be charging people like what we charged before plus materials. Like last ticket price for the nine day was like 1200 or so. It's going to be around there a little bit more because we've got more materials. Uh, we're going to have like 300 or $400 in materials. So, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, so the only thing I need from you now is then to look into the continue on a welder, look into the internet. And maybe send me some pictures of the permaculture related topics around your farm. And I know you had some okay. pictures you sent me before. Maybe I don't know if you have a compilation anywhere, uh, but you got a bunch. Yeah, of I've, I've got some. I've, I've got some YouTube videos out there too. Yeah, yeah. If you could send that. Yeah, like I've got, I've got a uh, solar powered irrigation pump. Yeah. Also, I've got going here. Um, I, I dug some swales. You know via permaculture style you know mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and i have a garden going so i've got some some uh, mustard greens and uh, lettuce and stuff like that that grow in there too hopefully they'd be able to survive till uh january you know but you, you never know yeah yeah so sometimes we'll get a freeze sometimes it'll get down to like 15 degrees and it'll take out vegetables like that yeah yep no that's good that's good Sounds good. So I think I think I got what I need. So I'm gonna write the announcement. I gotta basically do that, and I want to publish that. Try to publish that tomorrow, and take a photo shoot of the printer and more things and stuff like that. Uh, I'm doing a so. What's really cool? I'm doing like a magnetic attached flex plate, so you can take the prints right off. You can snap them off. So that's that's in a basic printer as well. So it's looking oh, really good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds cool. Sounds cool. Yeah, I'm glad. So I look forward to it. And it's only six weeks away, so we got to just get get rolling on it and, and do the first experiment and focus <laughs> focus on a collaborative aspect. All of us, Michelle and, and uh, Chris, we all felt good about the idea that we're going to collaborate. Like, whatever we do, we're, we constantly upload to the wiki and, you know, divide the Raspberry Pi project, divide the welder project, whatever. If there's any stuff. But, yeah, just... just 
focusing on a collaborative design where uh, it's a good experience for people to, to see how they work together to, for better product, better results and things. Yeah. All right. All right. <clears throat> well, sounds good. Sounds good. Oh, yeah. Last thing. Um, you see my email about two weeks? Yeah. I think we, yeah, we want, we'd like you to, to be here two weeks because I, I just can't, like more people, other people are saying they can't do more than two weeks either. Uh, but we can do it. We can do two weeks. Uh, do you think there will be another option where you can do like two weeks and then two weeks or uh, two months later? Because the whole whole thing is three months. You know. Yeah, well, I'm I'm, I'm asking Jean about that, and so so she's kind of like waffling. So uh, let let me let me just see how that rolled out. I yeah. may be able to do that. Because the ideal thing is. Um, I mean, we wanted you on the second month, which is when we have the torch table and we're doing some mach big machines and welding and torching. So that's where you'd be really helpful. Um, so right now, I'll I'll put you down for the first two weeks of of July. Yeah. Okay. But let's see if uh, Gene, you know, if Gene would uh, agree to anything else. Yeah. Yeah, because part part of it is her, and part of it is the the work. You know, because you, you when you work in a place and you take off for a month, they kind of look at that strange. You know, they yeah, <laughs> yep. Okay, that sounds good, and yeah, yeah, look forward to it. Um, All right. Okay. Sounds like it's coming together. Yeah, it's coming together, so I feel good about it. Let's keep going. Okay, so yeah. Keep keep logging, um, put in your hours, and yeah, let's let's continue, and we'll we'll be in touch. All right, sounds like a plan. Okay, all right, Tom, thanks a lot. So stay, warm. Stay, stay warm. We'll do. Okay. <laughs> the the three D printed earmuffs are keeping my ears warm. Oh, that's good to hear. <laughs> oh, oh, say hi to Katarina also. Okay. Well. Okay. All right. Thanks, Tom. Have a good night. Thank you.